Morning, all it is 10 o'clock, so I'm going to start recording the meeting now. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this hybrid meeting of the Archives Committee. I think this is the first hybrid we've had, so it's lovely to be here in person. Not many of us here actually in the Gloucester Room, uh, but thank you everybody for joining in online as you've not been able to come this morning. Uh, Gareth, uh, you have to excuse me in case my IT skills don't come up to the mark this morning, but Gareth uh, will assist me in that. So if you do uh, want to say anything, I'm sure he'll bring you in at the right time if I don't spot that you need to speak. Um, so the first item of the agenda is the election of the vice chairs for this uh, municipal year. Do we have any proposals, please? If I can assist, it, custom and practice in the past years has been the one from each side, from one from Swansea, one from East Port Talbot, and that they chair then at meetings in their area if the if the chairman isn't able to be present. So if I could ask for nominations for a, a vice chair from each side, please. Shall we do Swansea first? Councilor okay. Kenny. Elliot, do you want to come in? Yeah, um, apologies, my camera's not working today, but can I nominate Councillor Robert Smith? Thank you. Any other nominations? No, OK, thanks for that. Uh, Councillor Robert Smith has been nominated. Uh, do we have approval for that nomination, please? Yep, thank you very much. And now nomination from Neith Patalbert, please. Craig. Uh, th thank you, Chair. If I could just come in here, the, the appropriate vice chair probably will be our cabinet member, Councillor Hurley, but I'm conscious he's not on the call today. So I was going to ask whether it would be possible for the, the vice chair from Neath Patalba to be deferred until the next meeting, in which case I will be able to confirm with um, Councillor Hurley that he can be nominated as chair. And we could ask then for the committee then to nominate the same if that would be feasible. Yes, thank you, Craig. That's perfectly acceptable. We'll leave that until the next meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chair. The next item is apologies for absence. Gareth, please. Yeah, I've got a couple of chair from councillors Peter Black, Jeremy Hurley, Nia Jenkins, Ridian Mizan, and from Dr. Miskell as well. Thank you very much. Uh, next item uh, is, dis uh, is disclosures of personal and prejudicial interests. Are there any disclosures, please? None. Thank you very much. The next item is the minutes of the last meeting, uh, which was held on the 22nd of July. First of all, if I can have uh, your approval for accuracy, please. Let's go through them. Page one. Page two. Page three and page four. May I please have a proposer for the minutes, please? Thank you, Lyndon. And a seconder? Happy to second, Chair. All in favour? Thank you very much. The minutes are approved. Are there any matters arising, please? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, there are a couple of matters arising from the minutes of the last meeting. Um, the first one to raise, because it's not um, uh, mentioned in my report for the uh, past quarter, it relates to the Neath Mechanics Institute. And I am afraid I need to report to members that we still have a problem with the broadband service in Neath. Um, the issue of staffing uh, um, and this also uh, isn't in my report so I'll mention it at this point. Uh, we have been short staffed up to um, the uh, uh, up to now which has resulted in a reduced service both in Swansea where we've closed at lunchtime and Neath where we haven't been able to 
reopen on two days. However, I do have permission to advertise for the vacancy of archive trainee to fill the vacancy of archive trainee. Uh, I know that's been a, a matter um, that has been discussed in uh, committee beforehand that members have expressed their support for the archive trainee post. So I think it because it's not in my report, I think it's probably appropriate at this point to to mention that and that we hope therefore to have a full full staff complement and be able to both provide a full service in Neath and our pre COVID opening hours in Swansea. If I move on, um, the National Broadcast Archives and most of the re relocation of the archives uh, discussion is on the uh, in my report. I just want to clarify on a point of um, accuracy, um, and I have to say that um, I I was uh, under an, uh, the impression, as indeed Jeff Bacon was at the last meeting, that the archive collection would not be moved from the Civic Centre until it was established at the Strong Room Met BS four nine seven one conformity with which was a pre prerequisite of accreditation. Um, I've on a factual note, uh, I have since learned since the meeting back in July that we can't uh, me accurately measure the humidity in the archive strong room unless the collection is in there. So it, it's it's not factually correct to say that we wouldn't move the co uh, collection in until we, we knew whether it met the um, co um, conditions uh, of BS4971. Uh, we have to move the collection in and then see how that affects the humidity. Obviously, the temperature, which is affected by external factors, is n does not affect the um, uh, collection. However, the collection itself contains the largest amount of moisture that would be in the strong room. It, it, it's well over 50% of the moisture in the strong room is contained within the archive collection itself. You know, obviously it's an organic material, paper and cardboard and so on. So they absorb moisture. So you can't accurately measure the humidity variations without having the collection in place. So it's, um, uh, Jeff made that statement, but I, I have to admit, I didn't know that myself at that point, so I wasn't able to correct it in the meeting. Um, just finally on a matter arising, uh, the um, last page, page four, there's a uh, um, uh, note that members also requested that an additional informing brief briefing session be arranged prior to the next meeting. Well, pretty obviously that's not happened. Um, I think one of the things that I would like to hear from members is how they would like to um, uh, that what they would like to be briefed on. Basically, uh, I think that's the the most important thing because um, uh, I'm very pleased that Neith, I was able to show Neath Patolbert members round the archive strong room um, during the last quarter, and I did ask that question, and I think there's still a lack of clarity as to what the the format of that meeting should have place, take place on what exactly members wanted to be brief about, briefed about. Certainly, Neath Patolbert members were not sure, and, and uh, obviously um, Swansea members would have views as well. So I think we can still arrange that meeting, but I think we probably need a bit more clarity as to what format that meeting should take. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Kim. So on that point, if uh, members of the committee can put forward any um, points that they would like clar uh, clarity on or any observations, perhaps pass them to, to Gareth and he'll collect those. And then based on that, Kim can arrange uh, an, a briefing for the committee. Um, well, good news that um, the um, archive vacancy uh, that's that's is taking place so we look forward to uh, that trainee being in post in due course may i ask about the broadband in in uh, the the neath mechanics institute when might that be resolved um i i think actually i probably would like to have a conversation with craig after this this meeting or perhaps a, a call because um uh, if any of you have had problems with broad, 
band suppliers, you may know just how difficult it can be. And uh, we've seen we changed supplier, but uh, so we uh, actually I won't name the companies, uh, not to name and shame them, but we changed supplier from one to the other, and uh, we're having as much trouble with the new supplier as we were with the old one. And um, fortunately, I, I'm not the person that has to has to deal with the um, the company, but uh, it's been a complete nightmare. And it would be very useful if. Um, in these Potomac Council's IT section were um, uh, not involved um, with with this because um, it's um, it's very frustrating. We did open on the 25th of April. Uh, today is the 30th of September. Not quite sure how many months that is. Is it five or six? But um, it's um, it's very frustrating that we still don't have a broadband, which affects our ability to provide a service to family historians in Nice, and um, it's it's really uh, becoming a saga that's just dragged on for too long. Uh, and I'm afraid I'm not technically adept enough to quite understand the um, the, the technicalities of it, but it does relate to um, the old style broadband connection and then the new fibre broadband and, and what what exactly um, is in the Mechanics Institute. I'm afraid I can't really uh, go into more technical detail because I'm a bit of a novice in that. OK. Well, thank you. Thank you, Kim. And um, as you suggest, if if you and Craig can have a conversation about that and we look forward to being updated either at the next meeting or hopefully before. Thank you. The next item is the report of the County Archivist and Kim, I'll hand over to you to take that report, please. Oh, sorry, I do apologise. Before we move on, I should have asked if members of the committee have any any questions on the update that Kim gave on the matters arising. No, thank you very much. Sorry, Kim, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'll go through in the paragraph order as in the report, which is uh, um, uh, you will have uh, in front of you, no doubt. Um, the first paragraph, first section relates to the use of the service. Um, you will see that the um, figures in Swansea are climbing. Uh, they're more than double what they were in the uh, quarter, same quarter last year. Um, and the uh, the figures for Neath are are still very small, and this probably relates mostly to the fact that we don't have facilities for family historians available simply because we don't have the broadband connection on which the the service relies. So essentially, what we're providing in Neath at the moment is access to the Neath Antiquarian Society collections, but uh, we need to to re-establish our service to family historians over there. Um, I think that's probably all I want to say for about the um, uh, this section. But I'll take any questions as I move from section to section. If anybody would like to um, make any comment. No questions or observations? No, thank you very much. Uh, moving on to the National Broadcast Archive. Uh, this is also a something that has been subject to delay. Um, it's a delay at the National Library of Wales End. Um, just for just to recap, this is a facility which um, will allow people to access archived television footage from ITV Wales, BBC Wales, S and S4C via the a direct connection with the National Library of Wales. Uh, it's quite an exciting project. The, it's these um, uh, dispersed uh, facilities are uh, known as clip corners and there is a clip center up in Aberystwyth and they're doing a lot of work to reconfigure their archive reading room to create the clip center. Um, 
it's it's a model that's been um, followed uh, in other parts of the UK. Uh, for example, in Manchester Library, you can go in and watch Granada TV, old Granada TV programmes, and it's it's very popular there. And it appeals to a different constituency from the traditional archive user. So I'm very enthusiastic about this, and um, I do sit on the the project team for the, um, uh, the National Library as a representative of the local archives. Uh, we meet via Zoom um, on a monthly basis. And I'm pleased to say that Swansea, along with Carmarthen, will be uh, one of the first um, clip corners to open. I think Carmarthen will, uh, is ahead of us, but um, we'll probably be the second. Um, but it's just um, just a little bit frustrating that we haven't managed to to open yet because the opening was due to take place in September. Um, however, um, I can arrange a uh, members also have been interested in this uh, uh, project and um, they've asked to be given a demonstration when it does open. I'll arrange something so that you can come and have a look at how it works and so on. Um, but we are hoping to um, carry out uh, outreach activity. Um, I think at a previous meeting there was a question from members as to whether, to, to use uh, the term probably not exactly correct, but cinema showings, uh, if you know what I mean, uh, could be arranged for local history groups and could we go out to um, um, uh, to areas to to show specific programs, you know, whether that's a documentary on the um, the closing of coal mines or or um, uh, Aberfan or, or or whatever, um, uh, and and that can be arranged. Uh, we'd have to arrange the rights with the TV company involved, but uh, as we have, but we'll have access to those programs. Um, essentially, um, once again, you'll have to excuse my technical ignorance, but I think we'll probably what we would do would be to download and then take it out to the um, um, uh, the venue, and then we'd, we'd have rights uh, granted to for that particular showing. So I, I perceive that in the future as being a really valuable part of our outreach that we could go let's say to Seven Sisters or something like that and, and show a local documentary uh, about the, um, the decline of the uh, um, uh, coal industry in Seven Sisters or um, something along those lines. And, 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 and that would be of interest probably to a constituency that don't necessarily want to spend time looking at documents, but I think everybody enjoys watching television programmes, the cinema showings and so on. I'll take any questions on that if anybody wants to make any questions or comments. Any questions or observations from anyone? No, uh, just to say, Kim, I, I think that sounds a really um, positive project and um, yeah I'm sure it's going to be very popular uh, because as you say it does it does uh, <clears throat> present a different offering and I think for that outreach work there are many community halls and venues that do have cinema showings and to be able to take it to them is going to make such um, archive material so much more accessible so that's really exciting to hear thank you Kim. Thanks. Actually, I will just add that um, one of the clip corners is in the Wales Millennium Centre and they're going to be doing even more exciting things work, working with um, film students and uh, uh, obviously we've got a department of film um, in the uh, Univers University of Wales Trinity St David um, so um, that that will be a, a, um, a an interesting experiment for um, sort of a vanguard of what could be done with historic uh, TV footage that um, it could be part of um, the um, um, students course to um, uh, to to use it and 
uh, uh, kind of think of the phrase mashup, but you know, you know what I mean. That um, it could be, it could be a really valuable thing for for students, film students, and so on. Moving on to um, section three, um, uh, the uh, and actually, I think this would be a good point to just say that I wrote this report. Um, um, assuming the meeting was going to be take place on the 16th of September. So I wrote it just immediately in the first days of September uh, for submission on, um, by the 9th. So there has been some um, uh, 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 things have changed during that time. Uh, and uh, the, perhaps this is the first point. Um, uh, I think at the point that I I'd, written it we just heard the the sad news of the death of the queen and uh that i was um uh i think it was probably on on the day uh that it uh that, that i was putting the finishing touches to to this but it is worth bearing in mind that the, this this report was written for a meet, meeting on the 16th of september um but the in the very early part of this reporting quarter, early June, um, the annual report was uh, the County Archivist was published online. And uh, I hope that if you click the link in the agenda pack, you'll be able to have a read through there. There's a, an overview of what we've done during the previous year, 2021 to 2022, and also a number of interesting um, uh, local history articles including one I should mention as uh, Neat Antiquarian Society's represented today by um, Martin Griffiths for the, the Neat Antiquarian Society. So it was very good of him to to write a, an article. Um, the uh, West Morgan Archive Service is part of an all Wales bid for funds um, relating to a, a project which has been, uh, which I played a, a, a part in formulating, um, which consists of um, three um, three potential work streams, and one of them is one for which I've had a particular um, uh, involvement and have been moving that one forward. But the um, what's happened is that the um, the project that I've talked about in previous meetings has been merged in with two other work streams and a, a um, uh, an overall bid has been put into a Welsh Government fund which is called the Anti-Racist Wales Culture, Heritage and Sport Fund. Um, the, um, the first of these work streams is the um, um, I, I, I was kind of struggling for the word, but I think probably filtering of our catalogues to look for offensive terms which may be um, um, contained within the catalogue um, relating to um, racist, racist terms and um, and, and uh, other offensive um, words. This is done electronically. Um, uh, and that has been spearheaded by the Morgan Archives in Cardiff, and we've said we, we would like to take part in that work stream. The second work stream is the one that I've um, led on, which relates to the digitisation and web mounting of archive, archival material relating to Wales's links to the historic transatlantic slave trade. And as I say in the report, it's been discussed in several several previous meetings. It's never got very far because it needs external funding and it needs a project officer, although we got as far as a um, uh, a trial uh, lesson, but it really needs um, more work from uh, an educational consultant. Um, and the third part of the work stream involves um, um, uh, an already existing toolkit for archivists to use to make sure that they, in creating new catalogues, that they um, don't use terms which may be offensive. And it's a training toolkit to make archivists more aware of the issue of 
um, uh, unconscious racism in the, their choice of words in the catalogue. So um, this total uh, uh, project, I think if I remember right, came to £106,000 and we've applied to the um, um, to Welsh Government for 100% funding for that or if I'm mistaken in that, the, the, fund, the funding would come from Archives and Records Council Wales, not the match funding would come from Archives and Records Council Wales. So there's no um, um, re uh, requirement for uh, either of the two councils to match fund the uh, project. That, that's the point I'm trying to make. And um, most recently, in the last few days, we've heard um, from the, the fund that there were a large number of subscriptions to the fund and they will be working through and re report to us in due course, but they've had more applications than they were expecting. So we can imagine from that that the fund has been over oversubscribed. So um, I'll report further at the, the, the next committee meeting as to the success or otherwise of the of the bid. I'll take any comments or questions on that section. Are there any comments or questions for Kim on that section? No, if not, we'll move on, but we look forward to an update on that funding situation at the next meeting, Kim. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the professional meetings and training are as um, uh, 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 listed there. Um, I'm sure I can just gloss over that one and move on to the uh, section five in the report. Now, as I mentioned when I was looking at section three, things have moved on and I did write this report for a meeting that I, uh, at that point, at the point of writing, assumed the meeting was going to take place on the uh, 16th of September, two weeks ago. So I am able to update the committee that the um, the request for the use of archives reserves for a feasibility study relating to a regional archive, it is no longer required for the committee to consider whether a um, contribution should come from archives reserves and the, um, the the feasibility study will be funded totally by uh, Swansea Council from its directorate funds. So if members could please um, uh, ignore the last paragraph in that section. Um, I don't know whether Tracy would like to talk about the feasibility study. Hey there. Um, sorry, I had to duck out. I've, I've missed the majority of that. So, um, well, the, the feasibility study is building on a piece of work that was done in 16 and reported in 2016 into whether or not this region deserved a. Uh, can you hear me better now? Just realised I had my mic. Yes, that's better, uh, Tracy. That's, that's fine. Um, yes, yeah, so it is It is what it says on the tin. It's a feasibility study into whether or not a fit for purpose dedicated archive may be feasible for the Southwest Wales region and whether or not other uh, owners, custodians of uh, archives, not just West Glamorgan, would be interested in such a partnership project. So we will be looking for a range of options. I produced the brief only yesterday and I haven't had the chance to brief our own members. So I probably uh, would prefer to follow our own due process in terms of that piece of work and which partners and stakeholders will be engaged in that. Uh, but suffice to say, it is not a West Glamorgan archive only piece of work, so therefore I didn't feel it was appropriate for it to need to be funded by West Glamorgan Archive Service. That's probably all I need to say at this moment. We are literally at very, very early doors. Thank you, Tracy. Thanks, Tracy. Um, I'll take 
questions and comments about this section from members, bearing in mind the uh, the update that uh, uh, that Tracy's provided about the feasibility study. Let's see, Councillor King has got his uh, hand up. Yeah, thank you very much. I I just really wanted to um, draw attention to the committee to the the email that that Tracy had sent around to members of, of the committee, um, just drawing some clarifications. I think really, um, and I I think um, I think as Tracy just clarified the point around the feasibility study and what the purpose of that was for. So you know, not not really directing it at, at the archives, but more in looking at the regional um service bringing partners together um but i think also just just to you know assuring the committee really that that the the re relocation is is very much supported um by the council uh, and our understanding by welsh government and mald and i think uh, it's important to make that point that this is this is considered the, the solution um and and going forward i think um the you know, the the requirements have been met, and I think that reassurance was given to uh, given to the committee by Jeff Bacon. And obviously, there is that offer of having a further briefing. Um, it it also there was a extensive discussion uh, in Swansea at the scrutiny program committee um, ar around it as well. So I think uh, I think it was useful just to just to emphasise the points that Tracy had made in, in that email for for clarification. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Elliot. That was that was helpful to to clarify those points, and also Tracy's email was helpful too. So thank you both very much. Lyndon, Lyndon. Oh. Uh, Lyndon you like to come thank, in? Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, Tracy, first first of all, sorry to hear you broke your ankle, which is uh, most unfortunate for you. Uh, could I say how long do you anticipate that the uh, feasibility study will take? Um, well, on the basis that I only circulated the brief to my colleagues who is in fact, it's funded by uh, Welsh Government and we are match funding it. So it is um, a piece of work that Welsh Government would like to explore for South West Wales. So I circulated to them the brief yesterday to check that does this meet your expectations of this piece of work that you're funding? And in that brief, bear in mind it, it hasn't um, been through any other process. Mm -hmm. uh, in that brief, I have suggested we would expect the work to be completed by the end of May taking into account the need to go through a procurement process and a research and reporting process and Christmas. Great, thank you. That's actually, you know, for feasibility studies, that's pretty fast, actually, which is uh, which is great news. So thanks. Thanks for that. Um, the um, yeah, that that that's great. <laughs> I've forgotten my second point. I, I'll, I'll, I'll come back. May I? Uh, jump in then um, and it's probably a, a comment to for you chair and, and to Gareth within my my email was uh, a means to clarify and correct some statements within the report uh, so as these are matters of public record will that clarification be included So it, it, a question to yourself, Chair, and, and to Gareth, really, about including my clarifications and corrections in the uh, record of the meeting. Yeah, I can include them. Yeah, obviously the, the minutes were correct at the time, but as Kim has indicated in the meeting today, th things have moved on since yeah, we had that meeting yeah. and the mirrors have moved. So yeah, I can, if you're happy, I can cut and paste your email into, into the minutes and uh, that, that will go on record then, if that's OK. Yeah, that's fine. I think for myself in particular was the comment in the report that Sw Swansea Council and Welsh Government did not consider the move of West Morgan Archive to be ideal, which was not a fair reflection of the position 
the position was we didn't consider that that particular building would be ideal for a regional archive giving home to multiple archives because no town centre will really benefit from having a, a collection store uh, which nobody is allowed to go into uh, bang in the middle of the high street so that it was that point of clarification really thank you Yes, Tracy, and the minutes will reflect that it was sent by email, so all members of the committee had the opportunity to read it before coming to the committee meeting and had the opportunity to comment here if, if they wish to do so. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lyndon, you have your hand up. Thanks, I remembered. Um, you, know, you mentioned, Tracy, South uh, West Wales. What does that mean? Which which sort of areas are we talking about? Well, to be honest with you, we're not particularly clear on that. Uh, we have a brief to appoint specialists to hold those conversations. When we had the very, very first, very early doors discussion about a regional archive for South West Wales, that did include Carmarthenshire. We now know that Carmarthenshire have built uh, a repository uh, attached to a library, so they're unlikely to uh, be a partner but that's the purpose of doing the feasibility to explore the reach of this but I suppose for now we're probably thinking about city region if we're talking about a regional archive uh, we we will look as much as we can to some kind of regional footprint. Okay great thank, thank you very much. If I could just add to that I, mean, I think the the obvious partners are the two universities in in Swansea uh, together with any other smaller uh, institutions that uh, exist in the city uh, collect archives. So um, those would be the partners that we would initially approach just to uh, just to clarify that, because obviously uh, if you go east of the Talbot Bridge End uh, takes um, is part of the uh, Glamorgan archives and Carmarthenshire, as Tracy just said, uh, have recently opened their new archive facility in the last few months actually so um that's a, a also situated a, a alongside the um uh, library thank you kim are there any further comments or observations on that section of kim's report no thank you very much and we move on to the next item, Kim. This is the, the final final item, which I normally uh, just run through the accessions of archive collections. Um, the, what's attached? Oh, sorry, uh, that's attached and that's uh, in the, uh, the part of the pack. Uh, I'm not sure whether there's anything that I would um, particularly um, uh, point out here that members sometimes are much more eagle eyed than I am looking at some of the um, uh, accessions that we've received during the uh, quarter. Uh, I think if I'm uh, just going to say generally that the the number of accessions has uh, increased. Um, it was obviously affected by the, um, the lockdowns and the fact that we weren't able to um, to, to pick up uh, records um, and uh, I'm very pleased that the um, people are getting in touch and and passing passing things to us. In many cases, um, many people have done clear outs during period of lockdown. If you're stuck at home and you uh, uh, one of the things that some people have done is uh, uh, gone through and, and look for um, old papers that may be of uh, interest or cleared out their attic or or whatever and uh, uh, they're now we're now reaping the the benefits of, uh, of that you'll see that um, large proportion of the um, accessions that we've received we don't name the depositors in these lists but they're uh, just classified as private donation or private deposit and you'll see that um, the vast majority of the um, collections that we've um, um, received are, um, are private deposit and so um, perhaps just one uh, one collection that I'll, I'll flag up as uh, 
being of uh, uh, interest and uh, to members in Swansea um, is the Royston Neath collection. I think for many members that have got an interest in um, local history, they will rem fondly remember Roy Neath, who sadly died a couple of years ago, and um, his his widow has been very kindly passing um, um, uh, items from Roy's collection uh, to the archives. Um, he had a website which I've forgotten the title offhand, but it was a fascinating website of um, local history photographs that um, he was allowed to digitise from people. Many people handed him photographs and um, his, it's a real treasure chest for the the history of, uh, of Swansea. So um, in the in the um, uh, list here, you'll see there is a uh, uh, photograph album from Anissa Plant Children's Home, which is a children's home that we don't have any records of, but we do have um, uh, we do have a uh, photograph album from its early days here in the 1950s. So that's a fascinating, uh, fascinating record of that, that children's home. I think I'll end my report there and um, uh, ask for any further comments or questions from members. Thank you, Kim. Any any further questions or observations on Kim's report? No. And I think these accessions just really reflect the diverse nature of, of archives and very mm. interesting and fascinating um, uh, articles have come into archives, which is going to further enhance our collection. So that's good to see them coming in again. So thank you very much. Um, if there are nothing further that uh, committee, meet, uh, committee members would like to, to add, um, we declare the meeting closed and look forward to seeing you on Friday the 16th of December at 10 o'clock. Thank you all very much indeed for your attendance and for your contribution. And thank you once again, Kim. To